Hi, welcome to Master Budgets, the first concrete step in profit planning. A master budget is a business plan with numbers for the entire company. Let's learn more. We will learn to make all kinds of budgets in this chapter, but first let's review our definition of budgets. Budgets are plans of action that match a company's goals with available resources. Companies usually make budgets that reflect what the company aims to accomplish in the next year. Many companies divide their annual budgets into four quarters. Budgets originate in the planning stage and are tied to the company's long-term and short-term goals. However, planning is of no use unless budgets are compared with actual performance to identify the causes of waste as well as savings and take corrective action for future. Budgets serve many useful purposes in an organization. Let's take a quick look. Firstly, budgets define goals that can serve as benchmarks for evaluating future performance. Moreover, budgets communicate management's plan throughout the company and promote coordination by integrating plans of various subunits. By setting performance standards, budgets motivate employees to work in the best interest of the company. Since budgets look into the future, they can help identify bottlenecks, meaning constraints and other problems before they occur. For example, a company needing high amount of raw material in high season might want to look for additional suppliers in advance or look for specialized labor or consultants before the need arises. Budgets also guide the resources of the company to those subunits where they can be used most effectively. And finally, companies can manage their cash flow better if they know in advance about how much they will be short of and how much they will need to borrow and when. The master budget of a company is a master plan with numbers. Master budget consists of two main types of budgets, operating budgets and financial budgets. Operating budgets are used in daily operations and become the basis for financial budgets, which are projections of financial future results for the company. We will see both these types of budgets in more detail. Let us take a look at interrelationships between different budgets. All planning begins with a sales budget, which shows what the company expects to sell and at what price. All other parts of the master budget are based on the sales budget. Production budget is prepared next. Since manufacturing companies have inventories for various reasons, a company's sales budget need not be equal to its production budget. The production budget will show the number of units that must be produced in the budget period. Once budget, uh, production budget tells us how many units must be produced, we can prepare direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead budgets, which can help us prepare budgets for ending inventory and a budget for cost of goods sold. Once we are done with all the budgets relating to manufacturing costs, we can prepare a selling and administrative cost budget using the sales numbers. After all expenses are taken care of, we are ready to prepare the budgeted income statement. After income statement comes the cash budget, which shows the details of where the cash will come from and when and where it will be used during the budget period. Cash budget is influenced by all types of operating budgets in the company and also by capital expenditures budget. The last step of this long process is to prepare a budgeted balance sheet using all of the budgeted, sorry, using almost all of the budgets we have prepared above. We will learn to make all these budgets one by one. Let's get ready. A sales budget tells us how many units of each product we can sell in future and at what price. So, simply speaking, it is an estimate of future sales revenue. Sales budget is made before any other budget because we must know what we can sell before we can start buying and making stuff. Since a company's budget is as good as its sales forecast, companies may use past sales numbers or develop 
sophisticated sales forecast techniques to arrive at budgeted units and prices. Once we know the units to be sold, we can decide how much production to do, how much material to buy, etc. Without further delay, let us make a sales budget. So we have this Murdoch company here, which has estimated unit sales for five months and the price at which they will be sold. We need a sales budget for the quarter ending June 30th, meaning we need sales of April, May and June only to get total estimated sales for the quarter. Are you wondering why you are given July and August sales numbers? You will get the answer very soon. So all we need to do is to multiply the budgeted sales units by the price per unit and we are done. Let us see. So here I just repeated the question from the previous slide so that you have it when you are solving for the sales budget. So a quarter has three months total, April, May and June. Sales in units times price per unit and you are done. You can copy these numbers or print out the slide for future reference since we will be using these numbers again. A production budget shows how many units the company would be making each month. You might think why this is not equal to what the company can sell. This is because companies want to keep a little more than exact sales needs to minimize the probability of stock runouts in case a sudden rush of demand or any other emergency comes. Production budget becomes the basis for buying raw material, labor, consultants and other ingredients for future production. So to make a production budget, we need to know what we can sell and what we want to keep in our ending inventory. So before we make an actual production budget, it is useful to pull something out of our memory of the cost flow chapter. Remember, we said that in any inventory account, there are two items on the debit side, beginning inventory plus what comes into the account and two items are on the credit side, ending inventory and what goes out of the account. Naturally, debit side and credit side must equal each other. We can rearrange this equation to solve for what must be added to the inventory like this. Now, think about the current context of production account. What is the addition to this account? Naturally, what we will add by producing. And what goes out of this account? What goes out of this account is the units that are to be sold. So, we can reinterpret our general equation to solve any problem of production budget. So, for Murdoch company, we are given some additional information about desired ending inventory and beginning inventory for the quarter. Remember, we need two things to make a production budget. Budgeted sales and desired ending inventory. We were given sales information before for the sales budget. So, here, I just copied it down in case you do not have it. Remember, all the examples are based on our common information about Murdoch company. Now we can start making the production budget. So we get budgeted sales units either from our original problem or from the sales budget we have already made. In the table, we have three months and a column for the quarter. We start with sales needs for each month and add desired ending inventory, which is supposed to be 20% of next month's budgeted sales in units. So the red arrow between 4,000 and 20,000 shows that 4,000 is 20% of 20,000. Similarly, 6,000 is 20% of 30,000, the next month's budgeted sales. Now look at desired ending inventory of 7,000 in June column. Where did that come from? Actually, it is just 20% of next month's sales. Go back and look at the expected sales of July given in the original problem. July sales are 35,000 and 7,000 in June column is 20% of July's expected sales. Once we know how much we need for sales and inventory, we should be done. But wait, we have two important things to do before we move on. The first is, although we know how much we need each month, we already have some of it in the beginning inventory. Beginning inventory of any month must be 20% of this month's sales needs by our rule. So ending inventory of March 31st becomes the beginning inventory of April 1st 
an ending inventory of April becomes the beginning inventory of May and so on. So the red arrows going down from 4000 to 4000 and 6000 to 6000 just show the ending inventory of previous month copied down as the beginning inventory of next month. One more thing to notice is that the quarter column in the table is not a blind total of the first three columns in all cases. Sure, the first number in the quarters column is a total of the three, but the second number of desired ending, ending inventory is not a total. Why? Because we need the ending inventory on June 30th, which is the end of the quarter and not the total of all three months. Similarly, we need to put down the beginning inventory for the quarter smartly because beginning inventory for the quarter is inventory on April 1st, not the total of all three months. This is an important point and students often make mistakes here. So let's go over the column for the quarter once again. First number is total budgeted sales in units for the quarter. Second number is ending inventory on June 30th and not the total. And fourth number in beginning inventory is inventory on April 1st and not the total. So don't be in a hurry to total up all the columns. If you are with me so far, then notice one more thing. And that is the table we have used uses the same equation we have. Let's work through some examples. Here we are given some information about cheap chairs. We have the company's manufacturing cost and inventories. The first question is to make a sales budget for 2012. For sales budget, we need the units to be sold and the price at which they will be sold. We have that information in the very first sentence of the problem. So our answer should be 20,000 units times price per unit, $50. That's easy. Next question is to make a production budget. For that, we would need to know our projected sales and the desired inventory. Using our simple formula for additions to inventory, we should get 20,000 shares in expected sales minus ending inventory of 2,500 units. I'm sorry, 20,000 shares in expected sales plus desired ending inventory of 2,500 units minus beginning inventory of 2,000 units will give us 20,500 shares to be produced in 2012. Not bad, huh? Final question is to figure out cost of goods sold. Remember, cost of goods sold is number of units to be sold times manufacturing cost per unit. Since we are planning to sell 20,000 units and our manufacturing cost is $10 of material per unit, $18 of labor and $2 of manufacturing overhead, Combining them, we have 20,000 times 30 as our cost of goods sold. Everybody with me so far? Here, we have to figure out what sales in June would be given the production numbers. Remember, we normally start with sales budget and then go to production budget. But here, we have to go reverse. But it doesn't matter if we are using our equation method. So, we will restart with our formula and rearrange it to find units sold. So, we plug in the inventory desired at the end of June, which is 20% of July sales and just solve for X. You can use this technique even if beginning or ending inventory is missing. Just rearrange the formula and solve for the unknown. Happy solving.